This is the third part of converting the rigid bot from the stock motherboard to the Ramps 1.4. So I already got all my board already wired up for the single extruder on the buy, with the bye-bye adapter. I had a bunch of these female to female pin wires left over from another project. These came in extremely handy. The extruder motor wires are labeled on the ramps board. So I just follow that labeling, make sure I jump them correctly to the bye-bye board. I also used those wires for the thermistor for both the hot end and the bed right here. Use both of them up. Same thing, very easy. I snipped one end off, stripped them, plugged them right in. The limit switches, also same thing, except they're male to female. One side's female, one side's male. That way I can just plug it directly into the original cable. Um, you'll see five drivers on my board. That's because I actually have a dual extruder set up. But I wanted to do the video for the single because the video for the single is a lot easier to do than the video for the double extruder, for the dual extruder. That one's going to take a lot more uh, time. Uh, when you plug these in <clears throat> and you get this up and running, you will have to adjust all the pots. And if, if everything I'm reading is correct online, the pots adjust opposite of the AIP boards. So on the AIP boards, clockwise turned it down and counterclockwise turned it up. On the ramps, like I said, if, if everything I'm reading is right, clockwise is going to turn it up for power and counterclockwise is going to turn it down. So you will have to adjust those. I'm sure they probably did not come tuned in from the factory. Uh, I already got my Arduino plugged into it. I did remove the D1 diode because it's just a regular Arduino. So the D1's underneath here. You saw my other video. That should be in there. So how did I provide power for this? Well, I got a whole bunch of these wires laying around, so I'm going to go through most of what I did. I have a bunch of these power cables for power supplies, for video and everything else, or you can even use your rigid brick one. That thing's phenomenal. It's useless in any other way, so cut that thing up, use it up. I grabbed one of these, cut it directly in half on the length, stripped both ends of it, and connected it into the plugs that go into the ramps. So here's one of them, one side of it, I got both of them, and it's actually a fairly fairly good amount of wire left to run this from the power supply to here. These are pretty beefy, pretty good uh, gauge right here, they'll handle a lot of current, and on top of that they're like triple insulated, you got the plastic insulation, the insulation on the outside, so these should not burn your house down. Um, Make sure if you remove the fuses and just bridge them, make sure there's fuses in line from the power supply into the board. I'm going to stress the fuses over and over again. You can actually get sick of me saying fuses because I don't want anybody's house to burn down. So the most important part is going to be these three right here to the blues and the one green on the bye-bye board. From the top, you're going to have the extruder the fan and the bed. The fan doesn't really need that heavy of a gauge wire because it's just a simple little tiny fan. So you don't have to go finding some crazy wire that's really thick and hard to manage. So that guy's okay. That guy's already wired up. The extruder, that you're gonna need a little bit heavier gauge. That's gonna carry a lot of current. So is the, so is the heated bed. These are, gonna, these are what it's going to heat up both sides of this, so you're going to need some decent gauge wire. You want a minimum of 16, but you probably want to err on the safe side and go with 14 gauge. Remember, the smaller the number, the, more, the heavier the wire is. So don't burn your house down or be lazy or just, oh, I had this laying around. This is not going to carry enough current for a heated bed. AIP did it by distributing all the power across a bunch of these little wires, but we're not doing that. We're only using one wire, so make sure you're using heavy enough wire. 
Now, as you can see, everything's wired up. Follow the instructions on the PDF on what to connect to what. The uh, image on the PDF just shows the dual extruder, but it's pretty much very simple. If you go up, each one of these is labeled underneath. Follow the labeling. You obviously, you do the soldering. Then at this point, all you need to do is plug in your heated bed cable, plug in your extruder cable, plug these guys into the limit switch, and you should be good to go. These little push pins came in real handy because if I wire anything backwards or I'm too stupid or miss something, I can literally just pop them out, flip them, put them back in, not having to touch this. And that should about do it. Like I said, it's going to be a little while before I get to the dual because, well, if I'm reading up, the dual is going to take a lot more skill to get this to run on the ramps. I'll explain that when I run the dual. I will try to do, if this works perfectly, first batch, I'm going to try to do a video on the firmware and how to get your firmware all set up by changing the configuration H file and look for that next if it worked, if this all worked. Otherwise, uh, hang on there until I get it to work right. All right.